Hello, and welcome. In this video, we will use TensorFlow to create a multi-layer perceptron for the MNIST database. MNIST contains a large set of highly optimized images that contain handwritten digits. When running code with TensorFlow, we have the option to build all the graphs and then run the session. Or we can use an interactive session in order to create code and run everything on the fly. Since the latter case is more suitable for a Jupyter Notebook environment, we'll use the interactive session. It's good practice to create placeholders in TensorFlow before variable assignment. Placeholder X represents the space that will be allocated to the input, which is the set of handwritten digit images. Placeholder Y represents the final output, which are the digit labels. You'll need to select a D-type for both of the placeholders, and if you're not sure, just use tf.float32. It's worth noting that the softmax function, which we'll cover shortly, only accepts float32 and float64. For more D-types, you can check out TensorFlow's documentation here. Now we are going to create the weights and biases for our neural network. The initial choice of values is critical, but at this point, we'll just use arrays filled with zeros. Before, we told TensorFlow that we assigned the weights and biases, but we didn't initialize them with null values. As a result, TensorFlow needs to initialize the variables that you assign. Also note that we're using the notation sys.run since we previously started an interactive session. The picture below shows how weights and biases are added to the neurons in a network. Our code performs this using the mathematical notation with matrices. The tf.matmul operation performs a matrix multiplication between x and w, which are the inputs and weights, respectively. The code also adds on the bias values. Softmax is a popular activation function for classification problems. Rather than simply outputting a yes-no answer for its prediction, it will generate a probability value for each potential output. The model will never be 100% certain of its answer, so this technique is useful for gauging the model's confidence for each potential answer. So for example, the model might calculate that the digit 9 has the highest probability. Here you can see the one-hot vector representation of the label for the digit 9. To understand the machine's prediction, we'd like to know the probabilities that it placed on each digit. Here's what that distribution might look like. The cost function measures the difference between the correct answers from the dataset and the predictions of the network. We train the network by minimizing this function in a learning process. Then we need to configure an optimizer for the neural network. There are many options to choose from, but we'll stick with the gradient descent. In practice, batch gradient descent typically isn't used since it's computationally expensive. This method works well because it computes the true gradient, but that requires it to operate on the entire data set at once. Because of this, neural networks generally use mini-batch to train. Then we're going to test our model as well. To put our result into perspective, the best algorithm as of June 2016 produced an error of 0.21%, which equates to an accuracy of 99.79%. There are a few techniques to improve our model. Some of these techniques include drop connect, multi-column deep nets, augmented pattern classification, and dropout. But by now, you should understand how to train and run a basic multi-layer perceptron using TensorFlow. Thank you for watching this video. To practice and learn more, go to the lab and run the code for yourself.